Good evening, everyone. I'm gonna slap together a rhubarb pie here. And I hadn't done this in a long, long time. So, so I'm gonna see how things turn out here. And uh, gonna give you a quick recipe. I use homemade crust. So I've made my crust, the bottom one, and put it in the dish. So now what I do is I take a mixture of a cup and a third of white sugar and six tablespoons of flour. Mix that together real good, which I've already got it done. And put about a quarter of that on the bottom of this pie crust. And I'll just spread her out. And the rhubarb I got didn't come from no store. I bought it the other day at a farmer's market. Here's what it looks like. That's about two pounds. If I remember right, the recipe calls for about four cups. I don't know, I asked the old boy if a pound would make a decent pie, and he said, not like your grandma would make, so I wanna make one like my mamma made, so I bought two pounds, and that's what I'm gonna throw in there. Put that whole works in here. I got some fried potatoes going here for supper. Gonna have to turn them right quick. That looks like it might do it. Pretty good pie. Okay. Let me turn these potatoes right quick. I got my oven heating up to 450 degrees. I'm gonna take the rest of this sugar mixture and flour, and I'm gonna sprinkle it just on. I kinda do my apple pies like this too. I'm just gonna pour the rest of that right on top of here. I hadn't made an apple pie in quite a while. My granddaughter loves them, and I haven't made one in a while. So I hope my dough turns out good on this one, my crust. Okay. Now some people just put a tablespoon full of butter on there. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna kind of scatter it out a little bit. Put one right there. One right there. Calls for some of the recipes just call for a tablespoon. Uh, but I'm gonna use a little more than a tablespoon. I'm gonna put one more there right in the middle. Anyway, you can't go wrong with butter, can you? Okay, I'm gonna go over here and uh, roll that dough out. Maybe y'all can see that. No, no, I'll find a place to put that. Where you can see what I'm doing. Now I'm out right there. Yeah. I think you can see that. So, so what I do is I take a... I made my dough. I use Crisco. Just use old Crisco recipe that I've used for years. Which is uh, two cups of flour. About a about a cool oh, about three quarters of a cup of crystal crystal crisco well chilled and yeast teaspoon of salt I use fine sea salt I use that with my sourdough bread so I find it works pretty good with everything and then I just do the bulk of this with my with my hands. I use the rolling pin a little bit, depending on what my dough does. Turn that over. 
get this side flowered. That door, that door looks pretty flaky. I don't know if it. Turn her back over. Kind of smooth that flower out a little bit. Then I'm just going to roll her out. Then I add about, oh, they say six to eight tablespoons of water. And then you just need that dough with a fork or a, a dough knife until it looks like crumbs. That's going to do her. Then we just take that, fold her in half. I'm going to bring the pie over here to that. Potatoes off there for a minute because I'm busy. Then we just pick this up, set it right there on the pie. Set it right there on the pie, and then just, I do it halves. And then I, I tell you, I'm not too good at making stuff fancy. So I just go around here and pinch it with my fingers. Sometimes I'll use water, pinch her together, but this dough seems to be pretty good. A lot of people use forks, you know, to mash that crust together. I just use my fingers. Like I say, heat that oven to about 450 degrees, and then we're gonna we're gonna bake this thing about 15 minutes at that temperature. You don't have a little bit of dough left on the side here if you wanna add some cinnamon to it or something and cook that crust. It makes a great snack. Or in case you need to patch a spot or two, but hey, we ain't gonna have to patch nothing. It's gonna go down so good that ain't nobody gonna notice what it looked like. I just go around here and touch her up a little bit. Main thing is just kind of seal your seam. Or if you want it pretty, you can sure do it pretty. Then I cut me a slit right in the middle. And then I do one at about four o'clock, seven o'clock, eleven o'clock, and one o'clock. Probably don't need that many, I do. And then I take a little bit sprinkle a little bit of sugar on top of that crust. You don't have to, but I like to. And now we'll uh, we'll see how that pans out. Like I say, we're gonna cook it at 450. We're gonna make that we're gonna make that in the oven at 450 for 15 minutes. Then we're gonna drop our temperature to 350. And we're going to bake it about another 30 to 45 minutes. Probably 45. Okay, the oven just beat me. Okay, so real simple pie. Rhubarb, four cups is what they say. I use two pounds. Uh, 
You can use store-bought pie crust. You need two of them. One for the bottom, one for the top. Make sure you grease your pie plate. Uh, and I, uh, a cup and a third of white sugar and six, table, six tablespoons of flour mixed together. Uh, and then like I say, just roll out your dough or make your store-bought dough, whatever you use, whatever you choose to use. And uh, put that bottom crust in there. Lay some of that sugar and flour mixture, about a quarter of it on the bottom. And then throw your rhubarb in there, juice and everything. Of course, mine was frozen because I bought it the other day at a farmer's market. And uh, it was frozen. I got it home, stuck her in the freezer, decided I wanted to try this recipe. So uh, we'll see how everything goes here in a little while. When I get it out of the oven, I'll uh, give you a shout, show you the pie. Hope you're watching this, GB, because this one's for you, man. That's rhubarb pie. Know you like them. All right, we'll talk to y'all after a while. Thanks for watching.